In this video, we will show how to fireproof buildings and homes in high-risk areas like California. We will primarily discuss homes like the ones in the Palisades Fire in Los Angeles, but this will apply to other building types. Let's dive in. Buildings ignite because of embers, radiant heat, or direct flames. Embers are the most common cause of home ignition. They are light enough to blow through the air and can result from wildfires. They can ignite vegetation near the home or blow into openings such as roof vents, dryer vents, or other openings. Nearby homes can burn, subjecting your house to radiant heat exposure. If the fire is close enough to combustible materials, ignition will result. Often, radiant heat preheats surfaces, making them more vulnerable to ignitions from flame or embers. Homes do not spontaneously ignite. Usually, small fires develop around the home or building, causing it to burn. Direct flames can pass from an adjacent home or through vegetation on the property. What burns? Most wood houses are made from Douglas fir. It is a soft wood that is easy to light. Douglas fir usually burns at 662 degrees or 350 degrees Celsius. Aluminum melts at 1220 degrees Fahrenheit. Steel at 2500 to 2800 degrees Fahrenheit. Glass melts at about 2732 degrees Fahrenheit or 1500 degrees Celsius. There's much evidence to believe that the fires were hotter than the burning point of wood. In residential areas with electric vehicles and other combustible material, we can assume the fires were spread by heat far higher than 500 degrees Fahrenheit. Adding to the danger is the ubiquitous use of lithium ion batteries. These are used in consumer electronics, electric vehicles, and now battery storage facilities for solar and wind. They are highly combustible. It is unclear how much batteries contributed to the Palisades fire, but electric vehicles like Tesla's probably contributed much to the heat of the fires. This is evident in the melting of aluminum in cars parked in driveways. Now that we understand the dangers of fire, let's look at how to fireproof a home. Five foot buffer around home. The first and easiest step is to create a five foot non-combustible buffer around your home. This means a hardscape of gravel, pavers, or concrete. This removes the chances of fire from vegetation, wood mulch, and trees. When landscaping a home, make sure there's a 30 foot or more buffer around the home. Flammable structures like wood pergolas or gazebos should not be used. Wood decks are an issue as they are ubiquitous in residential homes. Try to design buildings in high fire zones without them. These can be designed in concrete and steel. Vegetation in this 30-foot buffer should be constantly trimmed and maintained. Dead vegetation should never be left in the 30-foot zone. A 6-foot vertical clearance on walls should be used. Wood bump-outs like bay windows should be avoided. Soffit vents, roof vents, and foundation vents were perhaps the primary cause of so many buildings burning in LA. By code, roof vents are required to let air circulate in through the attic of homes. This allows moisture to escape the building enclosure and allows for heat to escape attics. Unfortunately, these vents on windy days pull embers into the attic and other parts of the house and cause them to combust. The solution to this problem is ember-resistant vents. Ember-resistant meshes are metal wire at one eighth of an inch or smaller opening. This helps stop wind-blown embers through vents in the attic, roof, gables, and crawl spaces. The best way to stop fires is to eliminate eaves and soffits. Modern flat roofs are one way to eliminate this issue. For traditional houses with slope roofs, Eaves and soffits are needed. In this case, it's important to enclose the underside of the eaves and soffits with non-combustible material. This can be metal panels with built-in vents or with stucco and gypsum wallboard. 
Another problem is gutters. Plastic combustible gutters should not be used. Metal gutters are best. Gutters should have screens to stop debris like dried leaves from accumulating in them. If screens are not used, homeowners should clean their gutters regularly. Plumbing and dryer vents are also a concern. Dryer vents accumulate lint, which is highly combustible. Architects should locate dryer vents away from windy areas that could carry embers. Windows and doors are also a problem for fire. Many cheap window systems use vinyl. This catches fire easily. Try to use aluminum or wood in lieu of vinyl window systems. For doors, solid wood is good, but thin plywood doors are not. Although bubble plastic skylights are popular, one should never use plastic in the external enclosure. Instead, use glass for skylights. Vinyl siding is the worst. Wood shingles are also highly combustible. The best non-combustible siding materials are stucco, concrete, and metal panels. For a more traditional house type, use stucco. For a more modern look, use concrete or metal panels. Although wood decks are cheaper and easier to construct, there are a lot of other non-combustible decks on the market. In high fire zones, wood decks should not be used. Wood fencing is another ubiquitous building system that should not be used in high fire zones. There are many other fencing systems that can be used. Here is how I would design a non-combustible wall system for a traditional home. For structural members, I would use metal studs instead of wood studs. They're non-combustible and may melt, but will not burn. Fiber cement boards should be used for external application. It is non-combustible. I would use lath and cement plaster to create stucco. This was typically a regional material in California to simulate Spanish adobe construction. It can be used in traditional homes or in more modern ones with flat roofs. Mineral wool is the term used to describe insulation made from minerals. It is made by heating minerals to high temperatures and once molten, spun into fibers. After mixing, the slag goes into a furnace that reaches temperatures of nearly 3,000 degrees. A jet of high-pressure steam blasts the melt into another chamber. It cools into a mass of fine fiber similar to mineral wool. Cheap and very handy for building insulation. Just roll it, bundle it, and ship it off to waiting customers. There are two types of mineral wool, glass wool or glass fiber, and stone wool, whose brand name is rock wool. Most houses are built from fiberglass wool. It is cheap and easy to install. It is non-combustible, but not as fire resistant as rock wool. I hope you found this deep dive into fire resistant construction useful. As folks rebuild from the Palisades fire and other fires around the LA area, I hope this explanation can help homeowners build more fire resistant buildings. If you know of any tips or tricks for making homes more fireproof, please put them in the comments below. I am Jamie Roberts, a registered architect in the state of California. If you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe.